Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest topics in the sewing community. I'm Amanda Caressio. I'm Kate Zeinart. And I'm Meg Healy. Today on the podcast, we're going to get ready for 2019 by making some New Year's sewing resolutions and talking to Erica Bunker of DIY Style about wardrobe planning. We'll each share a little something in our Sojo segment, and then we'll ask you to share something too. But before we get started, though, let's just have a little check-in. How was your guys' weekend after recording last week's uh, episode? Did you get into some holiday sewing? What have you guys been up to? Oh, well, um, I didn't have any time to do any sewing because uh, I had yet another birthday party. Oh, right. But I I do have a cute story that relates back to last week. If you guys want to hear it, it's a cute cat story. What do you think? Oh, just Always go up for, for cute it. cats. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, you know, last week I mentioned that my cat Patsy just loves the quilts that my mom made for us. And so on Saturday, uh, we were sitting downstairs watching TV and Patsy was out of the room. I don't know what she was doing. And our other cat, Maggie, came downstairs. She doesn't come downstairs a lot because downstairs is Patsy's territory. But that day she did. And she crawled under the, the quilt that was on Mark's lap and curled up around his feet and was snoozing under there. And then she was completely hidden. And then Patsy came in. And she did what she always does, which is walk over to her favorite quilt and start nuzzling it with her face because she loves it. And then uh, she had no idea Maggie was there. But uh, Maggie figured out she was there and started hissing at her because Maggie and Patsy don't really get along. Mm-hmm. And the look on Patsy's face... It was such confusion and absolute betrayal because she could not figure out why her favorite blanket was hissing at her. And it was just the cutest thing and very sad. Oh, that was cute. (laughs) That reminds me of over the past week, um, our giant rabbit um, bunny is eating our Christmas tree, which is fine. We talk to the vet and everything, and it's fine that bunnies eat trees. I mean, they are wild (laughs) animals, but... Bunny has taken it upon himself to trim the complete bottom layer of our tree and pulled so hard, it he knocked the entire tree down, like almost oh on himself. Oh my gosh. I was in the middle of sewing something, like a seam, and I was like, had something positioned in my hands, and I could, I had to just like quickly finish the seam before, but he like ran away and was hiding in my studio for hours. It was, yeah, your story just reminded me, just like, oh my God, that's so <laughs> funny. Pet holiday my- stories. My cats actually knocked over the tree a couple weeks ago, too. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Animals. They uh, they matched. Luckily, the cat tree, which is right next to it, caught it. So it actually only tipped over like two feet. But uh, yeah, they they also like to chew on the tree and it's artificial. So it's oh, probably no. not so great for them. <laughs> what about we you, Amanda? We haven't managed to knock over the tree yet. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> we do. I do keep finding random things on our tree that are not ornaments like keychains and like just random toys and stuff. I think everybody just got into the holiday spirit and, you know, my two-year-old just, you know, has taken upon himself to add some little flourishes here and there. So, um, but I, you guys, I totally did exactly what I said I wasn't going to and waited until the last minute. And now, um, you know, I've decided to sew some holiday gifts and, um, Hopefully by the time this comes out, I will have finished them. But nice. you know, it would be after Christmas, so exactly. I would hope so. But, but you know, know, yeah, they better they're, be. They're for they're for family, so I feel like you get a pass. Like I could, yeah. maybe gift somebody fabric and say, "I'll sew it for you sometime soon." I mean, I've probably done that before, but um, but yeah, yeah. finally getting finally getting that holiday spirit and um, looking forward to some some time off. So. Yeah, and yeah, and this episode comes out after the holidays, so we hope when you're listening to this that you had a really great <laughs> holiday, and people and just I'm love sure the we gifts all did that too. You, although yes. we won't know yet because we are recording before. Christmas. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, after just one quick thing before we jump into today's episode, I think I I told you guys this um, earlier, but I was all like confident because I was I have a little weary about the confidence in my handmade gifts and everything, and I was all confident after our episode. I was like, yeah, like you know, I love making my gifts. I love receiving them. And I was always kind of, you know, a stigma. And so I was all confident you guys really um, 
talked me into the greatness of them. But then I had someone come over over the weekend and we were talking about holiday gifts and they're like, oh, what are you getting everyone, Meg? I'm like, oh, I'm making everyone gifts. And they're like, oh, that's okay. I'm sure they'll love, like it's, it was like, oh, oh. damn, I knew, I knew it's true. <laughs> no. I wasn't just, uh... no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, well. well, that person is petty. And yes. uh, I hope that that person is not listening. But if you are, you're petty. <laughs> yeah, haters. They're going to be wonderful, kind of wonderful, wonderful Always going to be presents. haters. Yeah, there's always going to be haters. So. <laughs> but I love this quote. You're not successful until you got haters. So oh, I go. do like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I I'm successful yet. <laughs> <laughs> One All day. right, somebody hate me. There's still time. There's still time. Well, let me be the first to say... Goodbye, 2018. I don't know about you guys. It was it was kind of a mixed year, but um, I definitely did a lot of sewing. And um, aside from the holiday chaos, I love this time of year to I um, I feel like the whole sewing community kind of takes a pause and reflects on what they made in the year. Um, they, you know, I, I think about my hits and misses and share those. Think about what I learned. Um, and then start to think about the new year because I'm such a planner. I um, mm-hmm. love the planning stages. Um, so today on the podcast, we are going to take a look back at 2018 um, in sewing and then talk about some goals and planning for 2019. So um, who wants to get us started? I, I was thinking we could start with um, looking at 2018, thinking about what you sewed, if you had any favorite pieces, Um, any memorable fails, and any um, lessons learned from the year? Well, I can go ahead and go first, if that's all right with you, Meg. Of course. (laughs) All right. Um, Okay, so um, I have a little list of things here because you very kindly gave us these questions in advance. So this year I discovered um, the pony tank and dress pattern, which I adore, and I made really a whole lot of them. I also discovered the Roscoe blouse and the Cosmo maxi skirts, which have both been um, past sojos for me. And of course, I'm very fond of those. And I also did a lot of sewing with cork this year, which was a fun new skill to work on. Um, So those were kind of the things that really jumped out at me as being things that I really, really loved this year. Um, I didn't actually have any major sewing fails. Um, And I think that's because- you. I mm-hmm. think it's because I didn't really take any risks. I never mm-hmm. moved outside my comfort zone this mm-hmm. year. And so that's something I'm going to work on in 2019. I'm going to see if I can um, start doing some things that scare me a little bit and uh, challenge me a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. How about you, Meg? So for me, I went through everything that I made. And luckily on Berta Style, you have your kind of profile. So I post everything on there. So I counted and I posted 28 projects in 2018. And those were just ones posted. I know I sewed even more than that, that some of them don't even make the post. But (laughs) so maybe those are my sewing fails. I don't know. Not not good enough for for the gram uh, (laughs) or the Berta Style profile material. But some things that really jumped out at me was, again, I'm just super on this jumpsuit train. I made this corseted jumpsuit. It was fuchsia and this really nice hand-woven Um, silk that my aunt brought back to me from Thailand. And so it was that jumpsuit that I just love. And I think that's going to be maybe a template. I'll change it up a bit for a potential wedding jumpsuit. So just kind of thinking about that because it just fits beautifully. And another favorite piece was a the retro swimsuit that I made for the free sew along that we had on Berta, because not oh, only, cute. yeah, did you, could you guys see that one? It's like I the cherry so. retro. Yeah. So cute. Yeah. I love yeah. The cherry and things. I think not just making, I mean, making a swimsuit can be intimidating. I've made uh, many in my, in my years of sewing, but actually putting it on and taking a picture of me in a swimsuit and posting it was way more terrifying than actually (laughs) sewing it. And I just love that we even had some people on Instagram that posted about 
um, seeing me post myself in a bathing suit and this was their first time posting themselves in a bathing suit and they just felt like all the body love and everyone was sharing their pictures of themselves and that was a really proud moment for me just someone seeing me do it and so they said I never thought I would post myself in a swimsuit on Instagram and they tagged me and it was it was that was a really great moment awesome. for the yeah. for the year. Yeah, <laughs> you, it's so nice when you feel like you've inspired someone. I know, it's like yeah. the best feeling. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was kind of yeah my highlight, and obviously no fails. No, I had. <laughs> I just had like lots of mini fails. You guys, I was saying they don't make it on the on the profile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a hashtag on my personal um, Instagram account. So of course I, you do, Amanda. <laughs> of course I do. Um, some parts of my life are really organized. I think it's to make up for all the other parts that are not. Um, but I, so I looked back and I made, not including work things, I made 56 things. You what? Guys. Wow. Um, Amanda. I know. Wow. I, you guys, I have no life. Uh, my life is sewing. <laughs> and my kids go to bed really early. So I, I'm stuck at home in the evenings and sew a lot, apparently. Um, so, yeah, I sewed a lot. I And I think the other thing I do is sew items multiple times. So, you know, you don't right. have to yeah. pay as much attention the second and third time around. And I also sew a lot of really basic stuff. So um, nothing, no corsets, no, um, nothing that is, you know, super fitted. Um, I wear a lot of basic stuff. So I sewed a lot of basic stuff this year. Um, But I did, I think the notable things for me is really kind of taking a leap into sewing pants. I sewed my first jeans this year, which was a really... Um, I don't know. It felt pretty amazing. Um, I did the ginger jeans by closet case patterns. I also sewed a ton of lander pants, um, by true bias. And those are kind of like a high waisted wide leg pant. And I really credit those with kind of prepping me for sewing jeans because I think I, I sewed those, they, they came together so quickly. And then that gave me a lot of Mm -hmm. confidence to kind of jump into jeans Um, and I also sewed a ton of, um, elastic waist Nini culottes by named clothing. Um, cause it's just a really basic wide leg Mm -hmm. pant pattern. Um, sewed those up in linen and lightweight denim and a bunch of other things and hacked them to death. Um, but they're just so much fun. Yeah. I did some of those this year too. And, uh, they were great for the summer. They're so comfortable. Um, but so I did a lot of basics, but I also, I kind of, um, overcame some of my practical tendencies finally and sewed some things that were kind of just because. Um, I, I definitely jumped into the pinafore and um, overall category with, I made some Burnside bibs um, by Sew House 7, which was probably one of my favorite makes of the year. Uh, and also... You just the, recently made that too, right? Um, Isn't that the one you just posted? No, that was, that was the... Um, the the bibs are have pants on the bottom. They're more like a traditional oh, overall. Oh, but okay. I also I also sewed the Roberts collection dungaree dress by um oh, Okay, so that was it. Yeah, yeah. Maria Walker. Yeah. So um so those were fun, you know, just kinda just mm-hmm. because and also because I sewed so many pants, those were kind of like my what to wear when I'm not wearing pants um, kind of things. But um, I didn't have a lot of um, fails, but I think it's because I tend to sew really basic things and sew things over and over again. So I know um, the fit works um, for me. But um, but I think it, so. So it was a really productive year. And um, but I, the other favorite thing from the year that I just want to mention is this podcast yes oh totally. yes you know it's it's we're, we do it as um tied in with the work that we do as professionals in the sewing industry but i also it's been so fulfilling and so fun and just i don't know it's really um kind of reinvigorated me in some ways i mean it's it's new territory but it's just i don't know it's been fun i've loved doing it with you guys and getting mm-hmm. feedback from the community so Oh, definitely. This uh, this project is probably my favorite project that I've undertaken this year, sewing or not. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Well, with that in mind, having kind of taken a quick look back, let's talk about looking forward. And um, Meg, let's let's start with you. What are your sewing resolutions for 2019? I think I want to gear more towards building a capsule collection and a wardrobe, pieces that can build on one another. I have so many standout pieces that when I go to like casual um, events and th- I always gravitate to like maybe the two turtlenecks that I've made, like not like this like, you know, crazy floral skirt. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm trying to just build a more like a basics, my go-to wardrobe. So I'm thinking I want to, for my mashups for all of 2019 is to, they each build onto each other, like kind of use similar fat. And so by the end of 2019, I'll have 12 pieces that all work together. So not just making kind of statement pieces every single month. Like I want them to all build onto each other. Oh, I love that. That's what I I want to do. Yeah. So I'm just kind of planning a little, planning a little, (laughs) and not just going on impulse. Like, ah, look at this neon green, like fabric. Oh, look at this crazy, like bodysuit in the in the magazine I'm just gonna make that like I mean I love those I'll still make those but (laughs) building in a little more wearable and comfortable pieces awesome how about you Kate all right um so in the vein of trying to challenge myself more um my goal for this year is that I want to make myself a pants sloper I've narrowed down a pattern I've got some muslin so I'm gonna do the whole thing where I take the pattern and I make it in muslin and then I fit it to myself and get all the little details right so it will fit me very, very nicely. And then I can use it to fix crotch curves and other patterns Mm -hmm. and as a base for other things. And so um, it's kind of a big project and it's a little intimidating, but um, that is on my list to do this year. I also, just as a mini one, um, I make too many tank tops. I have so many same tops. here, same here. <laughs> yeah. I keep trying to swear them off, and it never works. Well, I'm, I'm, well, I don't know that I'll swear them off, but my goal is to be let to to before I make any tank tops this year, stop and think about whether I really need another tank top, and mm-hmm. uh, make that decision very mindfully instead of uh, just being like, I can make this in two hours, so I'm gonna, uh, yeah, maybe look for some stuff with sleeves because I don't have so many things for spring and fall, so. Um, the eternal goal of mine is to have more transitional clothes. How about you, Amanda? What are your resolutions? Um, I have a couple, but it's so funny, Meg, because I think we're like, we're on the opposite <laughs> ends of the spectrum and I <laughs> need to sew some statement pieces in the new year. Um, and, you know, I, I wear what I sew um, on a daily basis and but I, you know, we have like fun concerts coming up and I look in my closet and I, I don't have much to wear. So um, that's kind of like a little bit over the top, you know, my version of over the top. So I do have a, a few fun things planned. Um, but also um, I did it last year and I'm doing it again this year. And I planned a little um, mini capsule uh, for the winter and it was really fun. I mean, it was it was maybe six pieces. Um, and so I planned them and then I finished them and wore them together. And it was just really, um, I don't know, it, it, it was immensely satisfying. So I'm doing it again and focusing on that for kind of, um, winter sewing. I've got a couple of pairs of jeans in there. So a couple of more, um, involved pieces, but, um, I really kind of love the capsule approach to planning, Mm -hmm. um, being that I'm such a planner. So Definitely um, hoping to start there in 2019 and kind of build out um, along with some statement pieces that are, you know, I'm kind of to the point where I'm past need um, and it's it's more about want and right. I'm OK with that. Um, but I think, you know, that's that's the opportunity to to go a little a little crazy um you know mildly crazy (laughs) (laughs) I know I love you post all your sketches and you post like you're planning them and I'm just like so envious I I wanted to like that's going to be part of my planning I was like I want to sketch just like Amanda like I do these like crazy fashion sketches for like my crazy pieces but I want to like build like a nice like like all next to each other like you do so you'll have to maybe when we see each other in the new year you'll have to give me a little sketching lesson sure technicals yeah 
Sure. Yeah, that's that was new for me for 2018. And I really I really enjoyed that. It kind of like kept me focused. And Mm -hmm. um, but but in terms of um, let's let's jump on to the wardrobe planning end of the spectrum, because I think that um, that ties in really nicely with planning and thinking about the year. Um, And I wondered, what are your approaches to wardrobe planning? Are you do you go kind of the capsule route? Do you not really have a plan? Is it kind of piece by piece wherever inspiration takes you? Um, how do you how do you guys approach it? You know, it's um, it's really funny because you keep saying you're such a planner and um, anybody in my family would tell you that I'm a total planner too. like the number of to do lists. I like have to do lists within to do lists whenever I'm traveling or, you know, this right now in December, I have so many to do lists, but when it comes to sewing, I just, I just don't. Um, I am a total impulse sewer. Um, every couple of months I sit down and I try to plan some things and sometimes they happen and sometimes they don't. And, um, yeah, I approach wardrobe planning basically with what do I feel like sewing right now? So I feel like I need to work a little bit harder on, that's how I end up with like 17 tank tops a year. I need to work a little bit more on thinking about what I actually need and where the places in my wardrobe I need to fill are. Yeah, I can see that. I don't I don't mm-hmm. think there's I don't think there's a wrong way to approach it. I mean, I feel like, you know, sometimes planning it out so specifically takes the fun and that kind of, you know, whimsy and you know, I I definitely will like jump onto another project if I get stuck or bored or decide that I'm not inspired anymore. But I mean, sewing should be fun. So I don't think there's, there's anything wrong with just kind of going along and sewing what you want. You know what? You're totally right. So maybe I'll just embrace my, embrace uh, it. my uh, impulse mm-hmm. sewingness. Yeah, How about well, you, Meg? <laughs> yeah, well, I need to plan because I'm planning something like a wedding this week year so need to get on the planning train here so that's fair yeah but yeah totally an impulse or for for me I just yeah see a fabric or a pattern I just jump on it or I plan for events so last year I actually attended a lot of a wedding so I plan for I'm gonna make something for this event or this party or this uh, yeah so I'm, a, I'm an event pa- based planner and I always need to be you know the one that people go oh did you make that oh yes oh Meg I knew you would show up in like something crazy like I I I live for that (laughs) 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 uh, yeah so that's but I want to be a planner just want to plan out some things this year yeah so funny I feel like I get none of that it's like you know I'm wearing a t-shirt I made but there's you know it's it's nothing um that anyone's gonna be like oh did you make that taupe t-shirt um I mean doesn't happen I never have to ask you if you made the things you wear to work because I know the answer already but I I do try to comment when I notice that they look particularly good well thank you for that um well one of my favorite things that we did in So News um, this past year was our Close Minded series. And that was we invited um, a bunch of different people, amazing sewists in the community, um, to come in and walk us through their approach to wardrobe planning. And it was really, I think there were, um, between the folks, there were there were some common themes about really kind of finding your style and deciding, you know, what really works for you so you so things that you will actually end up wearing. Um, but there were but there were also some differences in their approach. And one um, person in particular, I thought had a lot of interesting stuff to say. Um, and that was Rachel Pinheiro of House of Pinheiro. Um, I believe her um, column appeared in our um, June, July issue of 2018. And um, we also shared that on the um, so news blog. So I will put that link on the show notes page for everybody who's listening. But I really loved her approach um, to wardrobe planning because it kind of um, encapsulates a lot of what we're talking about, whether you're, you know, sewing basics, whether you're sewing statement pieces. And her approach was really based on categorizing what you sew. So there are foundation pieces and those are kind of um, they're kind of basics, but you you kind of remake them every season. So 
maybe for, you know, you and that's where you um, incorporate trends. So you make your favorite T-shirt pattern and it's a basic for you, but you make it in the hot color of the season or you do a hack that incorporates cold Mm -hmm. shoulders and ruffle sleeves. And you kind of build (laughs) in the trends that way, knowing that these are your pieces that um, you'll come back to next year and remake them. And they are they work really hard in your wardrobe, but also kind of keep you on trend. Um, she also has the key pieces category, which is kind of more um, like neutral pieces that are kind of timeless. Like you make them and you know you'll wear them across seasons and across years and they'll be, you know, real um They'll they'll have a they'll have longevity in your wardrobe, and then there's also, of course, the statement pieces, which are the pieces that have wow factor, and um and really kind of thinking through your wardrobe about like making making each thing, having them be part of one of those categories, and then pairing them up in different ways for different events and um, occasions. So maybe you um maybe it's a work event and you want to have a piece that has a wow factor. So you wear a statement piece up top and one of your um, key pieces for pants on the bottom, like a classic trouser or something. So kind of, I just really liked that approach because it it really mm-hmm. made room for all of those pieces that we all need in our wardrobe and gave um, some guidance about kind of how to pair them up and and really, you know, make those pieces work for you. So... I like that. I like that it has that room for following trends because I, I don't usually do that myself. Honestly, I I get into trends about the time they're going out. So, um, but but I can see how that's you know saying okay, I'm going to make like two pieces that fit into this trend this season, and then I can kind of get that out of my system. And I know that I may never wear these after this season, but that's okay because it's only two pieces, and I'm doing that on purpose. I like that. Yeah, yeah. It's really. It's a really practical approach, but I think there's a lot of room for fun within there and, you know, really inspiring makes. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I just love, Amanda, when you refer to a trend, you always um, prelude it with a cold shoulder. You just associate like a trend <laughs> in a cold shoulder. You've mentioned a cold shoulder. Uh, that's so, like, a that's the times. only one I know. I'm just I know. kidding. That's, I just love it how you always. <laughs> I just start there and yeah, but I, yeah. You guys, the other day, uh, I saw somebody, my husband pointed uh, her out to me. She was wearing cold shoulders and cold elbows. Oh, no. I, I, I wasn't sure what that. I thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess it, it ripped jeans. Are those cold knees when you have like fashion or rips thighs. on your jeans? Or thighs. Or oh, cheeks. God. I've seen it. <laughs> well, you oh, guys, geez. well, <laughs> it looks, it sounds like we've got some big plans for 2019 and I can't um, wait to see what you guys make. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Excited to see that cold shoulder wow factor piece there a bit. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe next November. Yeah, we'll look for that. Uh, uh, 2019's long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I had the opportunity to talk to Erica Bunker a few days ago. Erica Bunker is the creator and editor of Erica Bunker DIY Style, a fashion sewing blog established in 2005. She loves inspiring others who enjoy creating their own wardrobe through the art of sewing. Erica pulls inspiration from the runway and luxury brands to create beautifully tailored, designer-quality classic garments with couture details and a contemporary twist. She's also a brand ambassador for our sponsor, Bernina, so extra thanks to them this week for helping us set up the interview. Now, just a heads up, there were some slight technical issues while we were doing this interview. I know our sound engineer, Evan, is going to work his magic on it, but the sound may be just a little iffy. But let's jump right in. Hi, Erica. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to talk to you. Um, we've been talking here about our sewing New Year's resolutions, and of course that's making us think about planning out our wardrobes for the next year. And I know you're an expert on that. It's all over your website. It's one of the big things you talk about. So I wanted to start by asking you how you approach wardrobe planning. Um, Well, um, I basically just go from the fact of when I'm reaching in my closet to get dressed to go wherever I'm going. I always um, think, 
Do I have everything I need? Is there something I wish I could put on at this moment? And if I find that I have holes in my wardrobe, then I start kind of making mental lists to uh, instead of just sewing the new high pattern that's out to sew uh, with more of a purpose. Uh, because, I, you know, unlike a lot of people, I don't have to go to a job during the daytime outside of my home. So my days are mostly just running errands and interacting with other people and everything. So I live a pretty casual lifestyle, but I still like to look pulled together. So um, I go from there and I think about how I want to look because I, I don't want to have to, you know, be out every day in like sweats or yoga pants. And I'm not really a jeans and t-shirt kind of girl, but I still want to be casual and not, you know, over the top, um, but just really pull together. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, I think you're kind of lucky, actually. You know, so many of us have to stop and think about, you know, what do we wear on weekends versus what do we wear on the, when we go to work. And it sounds really nice to just be able to say, what do I feel like wearing today, regardless of necessarily what is appropriate for the occasion. Exactly. Well, cool. So um, you do, when I was looking at your blog, I saw that you had a lot of like really cool statement pieces, um, just really gorgeous um, dresses and things. But um, it sounds like you are also interested in sewing more of the staples and the basics. Is that right? Um. Yeah, and I'm, I'm leaning around to that now because um, I noticed that I'm not, like, going to, like, a lot of events like I used to go to. So I'm leaning more towards everyday wear or what people who would actually have to go to an office every day would call weekend wear. But I want my weekend wear to have more of an elevated look to it. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, I, I have to admit, when I get on the weekends, I just want to wear my jeans and my T-shirts. But then some days you're like, oh, I wish I didn't have to save this nice blouse for the work week. I wish I could just wear it out today. Exactly. And um, that's what I'm doing. I'm making more clothes that I don't have to say, oh, wow, well, I wish I had somewhere to wear this to or whatever. I mean, like, I, mean, I don't think that there's anything wrong with putting on, like, a beautiful silk blouse with a pair of jeans and a pair of cute shoes. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> sounds great. And that would just make, like, a really great everyday look. And not and to stop thinking of things like a cute dress um, being, like, a special occasion look. You can just put on a dress and just go grocery shopping or run any other errand you have to do. You, just, you don't have to have on stilettos with it. You can put on a nice flat or... Um, a wedge or whatever it is that you're comfortable in. Um, the shoe choice is open. But, yeah, we should just all just stop looking at things like, oh, well, that's fancy or that's you're dressed up or, like, where are you going with that on? And I think a lot of people approach um, getting dressed that way, that if you're dressed in anything other than jeans and a T-shirt and a pair of sneakers, like, oh, you're doing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I think a lot of people see it. I, you know, I love that. I, I love the idea of wearing what you want to wear when you want to wear it and not worrying so much about the, uh, the occasion that you have to be wearing. That's great. I'm going to have to incorporate that into my own wardrobe planning as we move ahead into the year. Right. And, you know, and like when you if you're in line at the checkout in the grocery store, nobody is looking at you thinking, wow, she's over the top dressed up just to come grocery shopping. Nobody knows where you're coming from or where you're on your way to. And I think we overthink things like that. Oh, for sure. I know I do. So um, what do you think are the essential basics that every woman should have? Um. I think that's really subjective because you still have to put your um, lifestyle in place. But I'm, I, I live by the philosophy that if I stay ready, I won't have to get ready. So I, you never know when you might have – my life could just change today and I may have to go for a job interview. So I need to have a business dress or a pencil skirt, a nice blouse, um, dress trousers, uh, maybe a, a couple of blazers or whatever, great pair of basic uh, black um, classic pumps, pointed toe pumps, 
and just basic pieces like that. And if you wear jeans, you should always have several pair of great jeans in your wardrobe. Um, I like a great uh, classic white button-down shirt. I make at least one um, every year or every season. And because that's a staple, and I, and you know, when you wash them, they become threadbare, or right. they get the uh, antiperspirant yellow stains on the arm. So you have to always keep those in rotation. And just basic pieces like that. I like um, tops that I can just throw on with um, with different bottoms and everything. I know a lot of people, a lot of sewists are purists, and they don't like polyester. I think polyesters are nicer than they were like when I was young when they looked really, you know, cheap and cheesy looking. Now they're they're great. You can just toss them in the washer and put them on a hanger and you don't have to worry about uh, having to iron anything before you get dressed and you can just toss those on. So different uh, tops like that. And I think um, if you live somewhere and you know you're going to need different types of outerwear, I think great jackets or, you know, good coats because, you know, we sew and we can make anything we want. So I think everybody should have at least one great dress coat, one coat that you can wear when it's um, inclement weather outside, Mm -hmm. and um, maybe some lightweight. And those are probably the basics that I'm focusing on right now. I just uh, found a coat pattern that I really like, and I'm trying to get the uh, courage up to actually attempt to sew a coat because I've never done that before. So. Oh, my God, you have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to put it on my to-sew list for 2019 for sure. Definitely. Yeah. So um, I also want to ask you, um, as we're finishing up, Um, In every episode, we talk about our sojo. We talk about the thing that's giving us our sewing mojo, what we're really excited about right now. So um, what's what's inspiring you? What's making you feel really passionate about sewing right now? Um, Wow, that's a great question. Um, Right at the moment, um, I love fall and winter. That's like my favorite season. I love working with um, the heavier fabrics. Um, the projects that are going to take almost a week or so. I know a lot of people like those quick and dirty projects that you can go in and knock out in the afternoon. But I like to walk down in my uh, studio every day, and I like to know exactly what I'm doing and, like, and just keep working on something until it's finished. And so I'm really excited about that right now. Like um, I'm making next on my list right now uh, is a pair of winter white wool trousers. Um, I don't necessarily need them, but I just want them. <laughs> I just like the way they look. <laughs> and um, I think a great pair of trousers is a great alternative to wearing a dress or a skirt. And you can still be uh, polished or dressed up without being uh, necessarily uncomfortable. And, you know, you can throw a pair of flats on underneath them and a nice blouse or a sweater and you're still dressed up. So that's on my list right now. And also, um, as many coats as I've made, I don't have a red coat. So I'm making a red coat and probably starting in January. So that's a big project I'm looking forward to also. I hope you're planning to wear those together because they sound like they'll be really striking. I think I am. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, awesome. Thanks so much for sharing that with us. And thanks so much for coming on the podcast. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. What a great interview, Kate. That was a, such a nice little conversation. I know. I just loved everything Erica had to say about wardrobe planning and about dressing for the way you want to feel and not necessarily uh-huh. for the occasion that you're that you're uh, living at that moment. Yeah. Yeah, I love how she was describing. I just picture I've been in this situation so many times. You're in the line for the grocery store just dressed to the nines and people start like, who do you, where are you going? It's just like, never mind. I just, yeah, you don't know where I've been. You don't know where I'm going. Yeah, I'm wearing sequins and I'm buying bananas. I mean. So and what? I'm just, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. I can really relate to that. <laughs> Erica is so inspiring. Her Instagram feed is just amazing. I feel like. Oh, yeah. She's, um, yeah, just I'm always inspired. But and, and two things that she said really spoke to me. Um, one on the um, overthinking things end of the spectrum, which, you mm. know, just, you know, 
thinking thinking things through. Um, I definitely am guilty of that. Um, Says the planner, yes. As, <laughs> as the planner. But also, I loved, you know, her, you know, just breaking down the rules a little bit. Like, kind of first realizing what rules you've kind of set up for yourself and then kind of just... I don't know, realizing that those are silly and having fun. Yeah. Very inspiring. I had I had such a nice time talking to her. She was she was just so much fun and I love looking at her. Um I like looking at her website and her Instagram feed. She just makes the most beautiful pieces. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. she looks fantastic mm-hmm. in them. I hope I look that good when I'm her age. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, don't we all? <laughs> yes, we all do. So let's dive into our Sojo segment where we just give a little something that's giving us our sewing mojo for the week. So why don't you, Kate, why don't you kick us off? What's your Sojo? All right. Well, mine actually comes from a, it wasn't necessarily a sewing fail from 2017, but it was a, it was a little bit of a miss. I made a gallery dress out of flannel, which seemed like the best plan ever. I was going to wear it with leggings. It would be all cute, except most of my leggings are made out of cotton and the flannel then kind of sticks to it in bunches and it just didn't work very well. So I pretty much didn't wear it for a long time. And then one day I thought, you know, that pattern is also a tunic length pattern and all I really would have to do is cut off the bottom few inches. So a couple weeks ago I did that and I wore it the next week and I loved it so much. It was so snuggly and wonderful and warm and did not get stuck to my pants. So um, I am all of a sudden totally and completely into flannel, um, which was lucky because Joanne's was having their big flannel sale last week. So I went and got a whole bunch of flannel, and I'm going to make some lovely new gallery tunics to snuggle into this winter. See, things with sleeves. This is what I'm doing. Yes, yes, totally. And yes, everyone, I did get a cat print. Oh gosh! <laughs> I didn't even Love wonder it. if you did. I <laughs> like knew you just this. Knew. <laughs> and if if I had a dollar for every time I have you know made a dress and then like took my rotary cutter and just cut off the bottom Shoot. of it and turned it into a top, I you know I'd probably have like five dollars. But um, <laughs> but I love. That. I mean, if it makes you wear that piece that then it's totally worth doing. I've already worn it more as a tunic than I ever wore it as a dress. So See? it was it, it was totally the right call, and I'm super glad I made it. Got it. And I will be making more. Can't nice. wait. How about you, Amanda? What's your sojo? Um, I mean, I guess you can say that I'm in planning mode, and I am really – I just – I love this time of year. So um, thinking about my Make 9 2019 goals, even though I – don't think I sewed very many of my Make 9 2018 patterns, um, which is, if for anybody that doesn't know, it's an Instagram challenge where you um, pick nine patterns to sew in the new year, kind of get out of your comfort zone or try a new designer or sew something from your pattern library that you've never sewn. Um, so super fun to do. And um, really kind of this, I'm on this mini capsule kick, um, finally ready to make some time to sew some new jeans. So that's that's what my brain is excited about right now. That's a that's a good thing to be excited about. I still don't mm-hmm. quite have the courage for jeans. So they're just pants. Uh, yeah, but I'm not so good at pants. <laughs> but that's what the sloper's going to be about. You'll the be ready. Will yeah, turn the into sloper. Jeans. There you so go. Perfect. Give, yeah, and also I do have a course on slopers if you want to uh, I do have draft your own slopers, pant slopers, and I show me fitting them on myself in front of the camera. So you should totally Ooh. check that out, Kate. I should totally That's check well. that out. That's on Bird Style Academy. Yeah. I will uh, yes. look into yes, that. It <laughs> yes, indeed, I will. All right, Meg, what's your sojo? Okay, so this may become as a surprise, especially for friends and family that know me and know that I, I'm not a kid person. <laughs> But I have been sewing baby stuff. Not for me. Okay, this is not for me. Yeah, who's having a baby, Meg? No, don't get exciting. (laughs) So my best friend just told me that she was pregnant. And also my brother's partner, um, they have a new niece. And so she asked me to sew a little baby quilt with her embroidered name on it. And now that, yeah, my friend's pregnant too, I'm like, oh, I'll sew you one too. And I'm sewing all this minky. And thanks, Kate, for the hot tips on how to embroider minky because after five failed attempts, and then (laughs) then I go to the internet to be like, how do you embroider minky without all this? I just, 
I always think I can do it first. I never go to a resource before. It's just <laughs> I never read the manuals. But I'm like, I think you need this thing called water soluble. Th- but thanks for the hot tips there, Kate. You're it welcome. turned out super great. So I'm just kind of now into sewing maybe some more baby stuff. And it's just so soft on my hands when I sew it. It's just it's nice and fuzzy. So awesome. Yeah. Well, congrats to your best friend and your brother's partner. Yeah, lots of lots of babies. Oh, there's lots of babies. <laughs> yeah, so let's get into our sew and tell now. So last week we asked you guys what is the best homemade gift you have ever given or received. And so we have a bunch of Instagram comments and some of our show notes. So I'm going to read the first one, which was posted on Instagram by love.stephanie. And she said, I sewed some lovely silk scarves a couple years ago and gave them to friends and family who like to wear scarves. Good idea. I also sold stuffed animals and blankets for baby gifts. Oh, me too. <laughs> and <laughs> and I gave a holiday table runner I made for a hostess gift as well. It's so fun to give a nice handmade gift. I agree. It's yes. true. I, I agree. Might be more fun than getting one. I don't know. When it, when it goes well. It's a hard call. Yeah. I mean, getting a nice well, ha- homemade yeah. gift, it's awesome. But then giving one and seeing their face light up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a toss up. Mm-hmm. Well, we also got a comment from Stitch So Snip on Instagram who says, My best homemade gift wasn't a sewn piece. For my 30th, my partner handmade 30 small ceramic bowls, glazing them with foraged native ochre from our shoreline and making a set of display shelves for them. It truly was the most special thing. Every time I look at them, my heart fills up. Oh, that's so sweet. That is um, so lovely. Can I have some? That sounds so cool. That is, that's so awesome. I, it's so special for those, you know, those so big special. birthdays. And mm-hmm. I think there's something nice about, you know, having a display item. So, like, it's not something you put away. You look at it all the time and kind of feel all the feelings about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Super sweet. All right, and I have one from a comment on our show notes page by O. Hallie. She says, among some other things, I I cut this down a little bit, the best homemade gift that I've ever received was a knitted throw from a dear older friend of mine's mother who made it for me many years ago. It was a simple gift, yet I was so very touched by it. The colors were beautiful. It came out of the blue, and I cherished it. She has long passed now, but I still have that throw, and it's just as charming as the day it was gifted to me. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I love blankets for me gifts. Too. Oh, too. Yeah. Just- oh, yeah. That reminds me. Like four years ago, I gave my dad a blanket uh, and he – he says he thinks of me every time he's in it because my mom keeps the house so cold. Like I, I'm packing right now to go home for the holidays. I'm packing all my sweaters. And so my dad's <laughs> like, give me the throw. <laughs> oh, that's funny. At my house, they keep it very warm because both my parents get cold very easily. So uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be uh, walking around in bare feet and short sleeves. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So we want your responses again. Give us a little sew and tell and comment, email us, everything. What are your sewing resolutions? We want to know. We gave you ours. You know, we want to know. Yeah, we want to know yours and maybe we'll steal them a little bit. I know. I'm, yeah. I'm a little bit scared to to be inspired to go in even more directions. I know. But, yeah, but I, bring I them. I made a gesture plan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to think about it really hard. <laughs> Yeah, there's always a little room for tweaking if it comes sure, down to that. Sure, of course. Well, thanks so much for listening. Yes, thanks mm-hmm. for listening. Thanks for chatting with us, guys. And yes. uh, for everybody out there, hey, happy new year. Happy new year. Yes, happy new year. Happy stitching <laughs> and we'll, we'll see you next year. For links to everything we talked about in this episode, go to our show notes page at sodaily.com slash sewandtell. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at sewandtellpodcast at fwmedia.com or visit us on Instagram at sewandtellpod. Answer the Sew and Tell question, tell us your sojo, or just leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe on your podcasting platform of choice. And please leave us a review, ideally a good one, because that helps listeners like you find our podcast. And tell your sewing friends about us, too. Thanks for listening, and happy stitching. Sew and Tell is a production of FNW Media Studios and is produced and hosted by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. 
Our audio engineer and editor is Evan Rutherford, and our executive producer is Jared Mayer. <laughs>